Hi, my name's Neil and welcome to Retto for You. And a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, last week we managed to build this, but it still has some issues. It still only has half of its memory working and a sneaky suspicion it's down to bad chips. And to find those bad chips, we now got this in our arsenal, a Retro Chip Tester Pro. Now this was built again a couple of weeks ago and I made some mistakes by putting the wrong socket, but that has been corrected, and also some resistors that were missing. So after a quick word about our sponsor, let's crack on and see if this can find the faulty memory. Before we jump into the video, a quick shout out about our sponsor, PCB Way. If you're looking to bring your electronics project to life, PCB Way is your one-stop shop for high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly. With fast turnaround times and unbeatable prices as little as $5. They make it easy to get your designs made just the way you want, from custom materials to assembly services and even 3D printing and more. PCB Way has everything you need to turn your ideas into reality. Join myself and thousands of happy customers and start your project today. Be sure to check them out in the link below or at www.pcbway.com So I'm just going to turn this on so we can see what the actual problem is. So just let's see if it boots, which it is, it's flashing. So that generally means a part of the memory is okay. It's probably going to show 512, I think it's showing. So it'll probably be the memories in bank. I think it's the lower numbers, 16 till 19 off the top of my head, that is probably faulty. So they're the ones we're going to look at. So let's just put that to full screen so we can see. So you can see here straight away, it is only registering 511 kilobyte of chip RAM. Also, the CPU is showing as a 68 question, question, question. Now, according to my good friend, Amiga Spirit, he advised me this is because there is a memory error. So we're gonna hope this retro chip tester does its job and actually tests the chips and finds the 40 ones. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that memory out now and we're going to go ahead and get it tested. The ones I'm going to pull are 16, 17, 18 and 19. Now I know if this bank is working, 20, 21, 22 and 23 is working, it will boot and show 511k like it is. So to me the problem is in this other bank here. Now. Yes, you'd have thought it would boot if 16, 17, 18 and 19, but this is Commodore and it seems to be backwards. But hey-ho, let's crack on and get these chips pulled. I do have my ESD straps on for you ESD police out there. So that is those chips now pulled. Now to prove my point, I'm just going to boot that now and see if it shows the same on the screen. You can see here now those chips have been removed and I'm just going to quickly turn that on and see if it does the same, which it looks like it is. And then we'll flick it to full screen just so we can see if it still says 511 and the CPU is 6000. As you can see, that is identical. It says the CPU is 68 question, 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 and also the chip is 511K. So that to me, like I said, proves that the faulty chips are in those four chips. So let's crack on and get them tested. We have our memory here. We just need to go through the menu here and select the correct memory. It should be under DRAMS and I think it's in here, hopefully. So press OK and it should say, it's not that one. It's not the 41256, it's the 44256. So that's one we use for testing this memory. So we make sure that it goes with the cutout this way, because that designates pin one, and then we just flip the handle. As easy as that. And we press OK, and off it goes, testing away. Now this does take some time, so I will probably speed it up and put a bit of music behind just so you can see it going. Let's see how it goes.
So as you can see, this one has actually passed its test. So is there still some faulty ones in there or are they all good and there's something wrong with the Amiga logic? We won't know until we finally tested these. So I'm not gonna make you watch the test again. As you can see, it's quite a long process, even to speed it up. So what I'm gonna do is crack on and get these three chips tested and I put the results up on the screen as they get done. This one here has failed on the final test. You can see there it says test failed A08. Is that greater than C? So that definitely is a faulty chip. So what we're going to do is place that down here and on the fail pile. And it has failed straight away. That isn't good. So the results are in and we've got two passes and two fails. So let's see now if we can find another two good ones so we can complete the set. So we have another good one. So all we need to do now is find one more chip. Now I've got one more here to test. So wish us luck guys and hopefully this one will pass. So yet again, we've got another pass. So that concludes now and it means we now have one two, three, four bits of memory that has tested good on this the Retro Chip Tester Pro. So the proof is in the pudding. So let's get this installed into the Amiga and see if it really does work and whether this has done its job. Now before we install these, I'm just gonna run them through this. Now this is a 3D printed leg straightener which is absolutely brilliant. I've always wanted one of these and you just basically press it against the legs and it straightens them. Great idea. So moment of truth, all the memories installed so we're just going to turn this on and see if it's made any difference. Hopefully we found the faulty chips. Now you can see it is flashing, it is booting. I'm just going to flick it over to full screen so we can see. So there you go, we now have a CPU a 68000 which is correct and also chip memory of 1023 kilobytes which is also correct so that proves that it did find the faulty memory and in this case it was two pieces of memory that were faulty now this today proved to be a good tool to have it managed to find my faulty chips without having to go through with the oscilloscope probing for signals etc or just willy-nilly swapping them out and trying to find the faulty one that way. So for me, these are worth having. And I'm sure you're going to see this more and more in my videos in the future. Now, speaking of this, what I think it needs is a case. And I wanted to 3D print one of these cases, but this is too big for my printer to manage on its own. So what I did is I contacted those great guys at PCB Way. And they've actually 3D printed me a case at this moment for this. So look forward to that in a future video where we fit this in a case with a nice vinyl front, hopefully. So it should look pretty cool. So I'm going to leave the video here now and the Amiga as it's going to be coming back in future videos anyway because we've still got plenty of work to do on this build. Now there is more projects coming, Amiga Wise, etc. So look out for them down below. Don't forget to check out our links. There's links to PCB Way who are absolutely brilliant, do boards, 3D printing, CNC machining, to name but a few of their things under their hoods. They do loads of things. Also down below is my YouTube buddies. Don't forget to check them out. And a link to our Discord, the YouTube Retro Repair Discord. So come along, say hello, and have a chat with us all. So on that note, I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.